members, it is I, Trollface the Man. Now, the other day I went to a resale shop and I bought this Infinity Mirror. Basically, the concept of an Infinity Mirror is that there's a reflective piece in the back, usually a mirror, uh, some lights in between that and a front glass plate that is tinted. And the idea is, and as you can see, you can actually see me right now, uh, the idea is, is that um, <clears throat> when these lights in the center uh, emit photons, they're light, they reflect off the back panel and they reflect off this front panel and sort of keep bouncing back in between one another. The thing is though is that this front panel isn't completely opaque which means that it lets a little bit of the light slip through and it basically creates an illusion of depth, like really uh, deep, like something that's very flat can look a lot deeper than it actually is. However, this one is just, well, frankly, it's crap. Um, here's the box for it. It looks pretty old. It looks like it's something you would see like during the 80s or something. Um, but I mean, I can just plug it in and show you what it looks like. It's not very impressive at all. And I'm going to try and modify this today to make it more are actually impressive. Uh, it puts out 12 volt AC, so not DC, it puts out 12 volt, volt AC, which means there's no uh, rectifier, either half wave or full wave rectifier built into this plug. This is also receiving AC just at a uh, one tenth the uh, level that the wall puts out. Voila, the infinity mirror. I'm just gonna grab the box and read what it says on the back. Uh. Create a spectacular 3D light show with the flick of a switch. Stare into the mirror and let infinity memorize you. Or mesmerize you. Memorize. <laughs> mesmerize you. Uh, you can see that there is a little sense of depth. It looks a little bit deeper than the mirror actually should, but it's really not impressive for an infinity mirror. Here, let me turn off the lights so that way you can get a better view at it. These studio lights are, in fact pretty bright in here which sort of dampens the effect okay so now that that has been turned off you can actually see the effect at least a little bit better now the issue with this infinity mirror is they did a lot of things wrong first off um, the back is not an actual mirror it's more like some type of like colorful foil which does seem to be intentional because it's supposed to make those lines so that can basically be forgiven however making these outside these inner bits white is just a terrible idea because it causes a lot of the light to be reflected off those walls and basically produce more light that shines right through and it, it just makes it where the effect isn't anywhere near as powerful as it should be. So one of the things I'm going to do is paint that inner wall, the middle wall, black instead of white, and hopefully that should improve the effect a little bit. And the other thing that ruins the effect is the fact that this tinting isn't dark enough. It's not anywhere near as dark as it should be. The darker it is, the more reflections of light you get, and thereby the more impressive the effect looks. So I'm going to actually replace that with some tinting of my own, which it doesn't make much difference right now because I actually have to put it on the inside, but um, some darker tinting of my own that should also help to improve the effect in theory. But yeah, so here's the infinity mirror. It creates a little bit of effect, but not very impressive in my opinion. So let's get to taking this apart. I'm gonna turn back on my lights and turn this off and unplug it. So once again, now you can just see it's like a, a mirror, it's dark on the inside. After some searching around, I found that literally none of my screwdrivers actually would fit in here. I found one that looked promising, but it was too wide for the hole. No, there's going to be some inappropriate comments about that. So I resorted to these uh, little driver things, which I hate because they're absolutely infuriating to try and get a good grip on it all, but luckily um, this isn't on too tight, I say, while well, struggling to get that screw out. So I am able to unscrew them like this and hopefully get this back cover off. Okay, 
Oh, that was painless almost. That does actually sound like glass. That is coated glass. I'm surprised about that. Now this mirror is completely loose now. Apparently it was just held in place to that little rim there. Which is actually good because it'll make putting the tint on uh, later a lot easier. Alright, so this does in fact have a capacitor in there. Uh, it looks like it might be feeding the LEDs around the rim. I am just going to make sure that that is discharged, oops, before I continue, even if it's probably only a low voltage capacitor. Nope, no juice in there. Okay. Well, I see resistor there. They have a, it's hard to see, but on the other side here, they have a chip potted in resin, which is what apparently drives this LED loop. Then they have capacitor here, 16 volts, 47 nanofarad. A diode here. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to rectify. Yeah, it looks like it's rectifying the. No, oh, wait, why would you need to rectify that though? Those are. No, it's. Whoa. I'm not quite sure what that's for. I think it would to rectify the LED current. But it looks like it's almost meant to rectify this, but you wouldn't need to rectify this because those are incandescent. So I'm not sure why they would do that. But. Um, let me see. This is only a 16 volt capacitor. Let's see what the actual voltage in here is. 5.6 volts. It looks like we are talking about about 5.5 volts on these. back here. It seems to be fluctuating though. This one's 6 volts when I get the back, so maybe it was just a bad connection. So, 6 volts AC. Just for the heck of it, let's see if DC shows up with anything. Nope, so it is definitely, it's only an AC current. So maybe if I put a rectifier in there, I can lower that, or I can rectify it, and see if that will work for... Half-wave rectifier might work fine for that, for putting LEDs in here, because I would really like to put replace these with LEDs. You know, I should test these other ones real quick, too. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. Peak voltage only a half a volt? That doesn't seem correct. That was the red. Let's try this one. No, see, it must be because it's going through so quickly. I can't properly test the voltage. But there is another way I can sort of try and uh, see an approximate level, which is I have myself some LEDs here. And if I, this is green, jump the connection here. Now if you guys can see that, this green does in fact light, which means that there is at least a forward voltage of 2.8 volts. Um, and like I said, the green is a lot better color than the one that's currently in here, which is that sort of like nasty lime green you see here. So I might actually replace those LEDs because, like I said, they are just terrible, terrible looking in my opinion. I guess I can start painting the inside white here. Now I'm not going to make you guys sit through all that. So this is just some basic acrylic paint. I'm hoping that it will work adequately. And I got some cheap paint brushes from Home Depot, which basically have a name that I can't even find online for manufacturer. Oh, look at that little gripper things on them. That's kind of neat, though. And this is what I'm going to be 
using. And I'm more than likely going to have to do two or three layers of this black to really get a nice effect out of it. But that's how it goes. So I guess I'm going to paint this for a while and I will tune back in when I make some progress. So yeah, that actually went much quicker than I thought it was going to. I have already finished this. This only took about three minutes, and this is only the first coat. But yeah, I'm going to wait for this to dry a bit, and then I'm going to move on to the next coat. I'm probably going to put three coats on here, just to be sure that I got everything covered well. You know, actually, uh, I kind of had a little bit of an idiotic moment earlier when I was saying, I don't know what that capacitor is for. It looks like it's going to the LEDs. It is, in fact, going to the LEDs. The reason why is because they're using a single diode to act as a half-wave rectifier, and then they're using that capacitor as a smoothing capacitor, so that way you don't get that shimmering you get from, uh, you know, a half-wave rectified or even full-wave rectified LEDs. Uh, the thing is, though, is with it strobing like it is, where it goes around in circles, I'm not sure how necessary that was. But if I do replace these for LEDs, I'm basically going to do the same thing here, where I'm going to have a... Uh, half-wave rectifier and then a diode to help, or not diode, a capacitor to help smooth out the uh, sh the lights. But these run continuously, so that's a little bit more important in my opinion. Like I said, I am going to go with three layers for this because I don't think two layers is going to cover it well enough. And you actually want to be careful because like right now I played with one area a little bit too much and I basically resaturated the paint underneath and I started pulling up the paint basically doing the same exact thing that I was doing the first time which is just exposing white spots. So I'm actually about to put on the third and final coat of this acrylic paint but uh, I was sick of waiting for it to dry naturally so what I did is I actually put back on the cover the glass cover and plugged this back in and basically let it sit with the incandescent lights on. I figured because they generate heat, it would help heat up the area and uh, basically dry the paint sooner, which it did. But you can actually see there's a little bit of humidity build up in here now. It should slowly air out, but the paint is nice and dry and ready for me to put on my third and hopefully final coat. This time I'm not going quite as heavy with the paint because I don't want to re-wet the old layers and basically strip them off. So I'm going a very, very light coat to hopefully prevent that from happening. The thing is about painting this black is it's not only going to make it function better, but it just, I think, makes it aesthetically a lot more pleasing than just that uh, sort of white for this whole thing. So... Okay, so the third coat has been put on and is now fully dry. As I mentioned before, what I actually did is I uh, took this glass plate and I put it over top of there and I switched on the lights and that helped it dry a lot quicker. So actually, if you look at it with the lights on without the cover on, you actually still get a little bit of that effect of sort of like the extra uh, depth, depth, um, but if you take this piece of glass and you put it over top of there, you can see that it actually adds more so. You can see the extra reflections in there. So if you see me moving this around, those extra reflections that are generated adds that additional perception of uh, depth. Now first off, wow, this really has made a difference with the um, with the black, as you can see right here, just look at how much more color and everything is inside of here. And once again, that's because the white before was basically doing the equivalent of a bright flashlight, which is the extra light in there was washing out a lot of the colors. So like if you see, when I point this flashlight at there and I have a bright light, you don't see anywhere near the amount of colors. So that white was reflecting around a lot of excess light, causing those colors to be washed out. So once again, though, if I take this glass plate, you can already see some of the uh, colors that are way deeper in there show up. If I put it on, now it really, really has 
the sort of perception of being a lot deeper than it actually is. Of course, it's only this little tiny thing, but you can see a lot of color is going really deeply in there. But we are not done yet. I'm still going to put on uh, a darker tint to hopefully further add to the uh, illusion and possibly replace these with LED lights, which at this point, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I'm going to do. But yeah, look, it look, I mean, just the black right there. It's amazing that uh, manufacturers that prototype this type of stuff don't even realize simple things like that. Because I mean, just the amount of commotion, but in a good way that's going on now that I've painted that black is just outstanding compared to the sort of bleh that was going on before. It just looks so much better now. I'm going to take this window tint that I bought online and I'm basically going to take this disc and lay it out here on this window tint and then take a razor blade and cut around it as precisely as possible and then stick this window tint to this glass disc and that should add even more depth by trapping more light inside of there but who knows who knows if it's actually going to work it's only going to uh or i guess we're only going to see when we actually try it out eh our new mirror which is backed by that window tint i showed you before let's see if this uh if this helps it out so it's definitely darker and that's expected because you're lessening the amount of light they can get in but let's see what happens when i turn off the lights yeah, that's right. It's looking nice. We get a lot more actual depth here. The light has been reduced quite a bit, and that's to be expected because, like, once again, we're cutting down the amount of light that can escape. But as you can see, the actual structures, it looks like they're sort of piers of uh, different light in there. It looks very, very 3D. Remember, this is only a little tiny toy right here but the depth of the light is just so much better now. Like I said, it actually creates a sort of 3D illusion. I mean, just the black and the window tint has already improved this, this toy so much. <laughs> I glove made a farting sound. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, it's already improved this toy so much, but I'm really hoping to, uh, to, to bring it even better. Now, one of the things is though, is when I add LEDs in here, because they are actually going to be the exact color, instead of being like a, uh, you know, like a white or incandescent light that's been coated with some type of coloring to filter out the other spectrums of light, they will be exact colors, which means they'll be red, green, blue, and white. We won't get so much of that rainbow effect going through there, though, because what's actually happening is the light is dividing up into its uh, base components, which is basically a rainbow uh, inside there, give it all that rainbow color. So instead of seeing like red, green spires, blue, green spires, we'll more or less see a lot of green, blue, red spires, which might be a little bit of a trade off. However, I will still put a white LED in there, which should still, at least for that LED, give a rainbow effect. So it won't hopefully be losing too much. Uh, for that. All right, so like I said, I am definitely though, I'm gonna start with the simple stuff. I am going to remove these horrible looking LEDs on the side here. Red, yellow, green, red, yellow, green, red, green, yellow, green. Um, maybe this is supposed to be, no, that doesn't, that, oh my goodness. They, uh, they did that, they have, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten LEDs. So they just put two random ones, no correlate. Oh my god! As someone with OCD, that is seriously bothersome. Now I'm not talking about OCPD. I'm talking about legitimate OCD. That is going to bother me. I'll tr wonder if I can figure something out for that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, there's ten LEDs here. But like I said, I'm going to keep probably the reds in here because the reds don't actually look too bad. They're not as vibrant as uh, reds nowadays, but, uh, you know, it's they're not too bad. I'm going to take out this nasty lime green LEDs and these yellow LEDs, like that nasty looking lime green color. 
that is their old green color and this is how but this is how greens look nowadays i'm sure you can tell the difference between which one looks better that is just ugh. question is where is a good spot to start basically nowhere because the way this is actually well, look at that okay that actually makes desoldering a fair amount easier to be honest so that is that's actually a good thing okay I now have marked all the different colors on this side so I can tell what color the LED lights are green red green yellow green so um, basically I'm going to start desoldering those Uh, that's why they bent the LED leads so that way they're harder to remove. Okay, so that's apparently the side that needs to go into. So I'll just bend those and solder them back into place. So, perfect. Oh, it is a fair bit brighter than the other ones. And that is because it is a newer LED, and the old LEDs really kind of sucked. I'm going to continue moving through, I'm going to desolder them all, and then resolder the new ones in. Well, okay then. We actually have all the new lights. Instead of being the lime green, the yellow, orange, and red, it is now red, green, and blue, which I think looks a lot better than before. It's like a right old light show in here. Really does a lot if you <laughs> face it at, uh, yeah, if you face it at something. And that's because I said these, uh, if you look, the red lights aren't very bright at all. It's because they're older technology. And plus reds aren't typically as bright anyways, but maybe I will replace the reds. I don't know. Get a stronger red in there, but it's, it, I mean, whew. Has some serious color now. A lot of spunk. Let me put it in here and see how it looks. There we go. Just can't fit it back in with these long leads on here. Of course, I'm just going to take a tool and trim them down. See how this has uh, use safety glasses? That is something I am not going to do because, once again, I am a rebel. Well, okay then. This. <laughs> is starting to live up more and more to the box's description of mesmerizing. Uh, now I think it will actually literally mesmerize you blind because these lights are very bright. Let me put the glass back on, shall I? I haven't put the LEDs on the inside yet. I haven't installed them, but... Yeah, that is looking a lot better. I probably have to um, flatten these tips out a little bit with a file to make it a little less dazzling because the dazzle factor is a little bit high right now, as you guys can see. But it actually, it's not quite as drastic in person as it might look on camera, though. It's like a freaking disco over here. Crazy. I mean, I, I mean. <laughs> Oh, God, that is kind of cool. I, I kind of like that, actually. What's actually kind of funny about this is, uh, I told you about how these LEDs are, like, super duper bright and all. Uh, I actually unintentionally made a disco strober. If I point it up at the ceiling here, the camera, allowing myself to still see by flipping the screen, and I put my hand out, you can see that there is quite a party going on in here. <laughs> As I said, the device is definitely mesmerizing and also potentially dangerous to your sight at this point. Yes, that is looking pretty good right now. It's really dark now, so I'm able to actually turn off the lights and show you. Yeah, looking real good. 
not still to the level of effect that I wanted, but we're definitely getting a lot closer than we were with the starting toy. Okay, so I actually personally like the uh, strobing effect that this, uh, this, uh, the lights around the edges give you when it's on. However, it is a little bit overpowering and potentially blinding, so I have a few options. Either I take a file and I flatten out the heads of these LEDs to dis burst the light more or uh, diffuse the light more. I replace the resistor in here with a higher value resistor to allow less current to go through. Or I do my one, which is add in a variable resistor in series with this resistor and mount it to the side of the case somewhere where I can turn up and down the resistance value, thereby increasing and decreasing the brightness. This specific uh, variable resistor, actually this is a, a potentiometer, um, Anyways, this specific one will, I'll be using as a variable resistor. This specific one can go from uh, 5 ohms all the way up to 1.5 million ohms. So, we should be able to basically have the light go almost full blast, what it is now, to nothing if we want it to. Which is very good because actually the lights can be a little bit distracting too and if I want to turn them off that is a nice ability to have. So basically my plan is to take the resistor that's currently here, snip it, leaving enough for me to solder a wire to the resistor end, then the other wire, well wires to the potentiometer, and basically just have it go from resistor, potentiometer, which is going to be used as a variable resistor, and then other output and solder directly to that lead. And this resistor is 200 ohms, and I can increase it from 5 all the way up to 1.5 million, which theoretically should be able to just about turn off these lights. I actually should be able to turn off the lights um, indefinitely, I would think, but, you know, you never know. I'm just going to solder a wire right there, across there and a wire on what remains of this end right here. And there we go. I'm going to do the same thing with the, uh, the shrink wrap. Try and sure it up a little bit. bit of heat shrink tubing. Pretty sure this is the smallest stuff I got. Just keep it right on over here. Like so. Got a gun attachment. Hopefully that won't break. Then I got my resistor here. That I'm gonna do the same thing for. theory, this should be rigged up in series with the other resistor, and if I plug it in, I should now be able to adjust the outside lighting. So this is full blast right now. It's pretty bright. Ooh, two of the lights aren't working. That actually is from before, though. I'll have to fix that again. This one of the solder joints didn't take very well. It doesn't take much to lower the intensity quite a bit. Like this is almost not even on. I only have to turn the thing about one... one-tenth of the way to turn them off completely, but... I didn't have any uh, smaller range potentiometers. I salvaged this from a, uh, a uh, karaoke machine switch. Cool. I now can preserve it as like a disco, crazy disco mirror. Uh, it's fixed now. I have all the, the lights now functioning. The potentiometer works great. To adjust it. Now the fifth and potentially final thing I wish to do with this awesome new reinvigorated mirror is replace these nasty old incandescent like Christmas lights. I'm pretty sure they actually are Christmas lights with some new, brighter, better LEDs. Basically for that, it looks like I am going to need to install a diode here. 
to make a halfway rectifier and then probably bridge this right here with a decent value capacitor to get rid of all the uh, shimmer or shimmer sh all the shimmer from the halfway rectifiers basically um, smooth it all out so it doesn't look terrible if you jiggle it around while you're using it so the value I'm going to use for my um, halfway rectifier is going to be uh, a 16 volt electrolytic capacitor because it's the pretty much I salvaged most of the stuff so I got this out of God knows what and it's 470 microfarad so hopefully that will be enough to smooth this out if not I might have to try a bigger value capacitor but we'll see how it works Okay, so that is the diode in, which means this should now be rectified. Everything works right. So these lights should be what, approximately half the brightness? Let me try and light across it. Yeah, so it's only light in the one way, not the other way. So this should be, in fact, DC. I really don't notice a shimmer either. But, regardless, I'm going to put in this capacitor. Capacitor. Just to be sure. You can see I have the capacitor in there now at Actus Smoothing, along with the uh, diode as my half-wave rectifier. As you can see, it is providing a little bit of juice because now if I switch it off, it takes a second to fade out. I mean, it does that normally because they're incandescents, but it takes a little bit longer than before. So somehow I managed to uh, mess up this strip of light. I'm not even sure it's my fault. I think the chip might have went bad in it. But, I'm not sure, but when I mentioned earlier that the half-wave rectifier would probably about half the brightness of the LEDs, uh, I can actually show you that because right now the half-wave rectifier is on and if I bridge the connection to make it uh, not rectify anything using this piece of solder, you can see what happens. So that uh, brightness is when I bridge the connection and it goes full AC instead of being... Uh, DC with the diode. Can... This fesh, this, the, this fancy flashing light strip, no longer works. Uh, when I was soldering something, I don't know if it shorted one of the uh, channels that are built into the back of the board. I don't see a spot that it would have done it. But basically, there was a bright flash and not a zip zelch, which means this strip can no longer be used. But worry not because though it doesn't have amazing flashy capabilities like the other one I do have this which is a nice set of these very very nice blue colored LEDs the straw hat LEDs too so they're uh, less directional they actually have an inverted lens so a lens that goes this way that basically helps uh, disperse the light outward instead of right wherever it's pointing at. So they tend to give more of a uh, generalized glow instead of a directional glow. But um, I can slice these and just put them around the rim. What I can do now is remember how I built in that half wave rectifier. I have the capacitor there, the diode. I no longer need that because what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace all these with LEDs, is I'm going to replace this transformer now with this one I happen to find. I collect a bunch of them from garage sales most of the time. And this one is a 120 volt to three volt half an amp. Um, but the good news is, is this is actually a DC output too. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna be a, a step down transformer in here and then Theoretically, a full wave rectifier in here, along with some smoothing capacitors, but who knows, maybe they did a half wave rectifier and they uh, only use one capacitor. You never can quite tell with these things. But this should run cooler, and it means instead of me having to have a half wave rectifier built into there, I can just take this end, splice it off, put on this other end, and have these center lights hooked directly up to the input and then I can have these outer lights which I'm going to snip 
and put them around the edges. So there's not going to need to be like a resistor on each one. I will put a resistor uh, in series with all of the lights just to make sure or to basically lower down the uh, the amperage a little bit so that way they, I don't have to worry about them being overpowered. But in general, I mean, it's just going to help. Excuse me, that was my phone. It's just going to make things a lot easier. I'm not gonna have to put a resistor on each and every single light to make sure they're not getting over voltaged or more appropriately over amped. So I'm gonna start by desoldering the this half wave rectifier I built into here, which is no longer necessary because of the new thing I'm going to do. Um, but I can just basically resolder these wires together. And that's pretty much it, except for removing that capacitor, which yeah, maybe I should leave the capacitor on for some extra smoothing, but yeah, you know, what is, is. Yeah, so this basically just has input right here the input plug to a switch and then it was to these lights and to that other blinking board in parallel but now we're pretty much just going to do the same thing except for remove the uh, the other board and replace this current power supply with a 3 volt power supply instead of the uh, 12 volt it came with and hopefully it won't catch fire like this thing probably had the potential to do So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to swap these transformers. I'm going to basically uh, cut off this end of this one and put it on this one right here. And it would be a lot simpler if I just had a 3-volt transformer with this end on it, but I haven't actually really seen very many power transformers, low power boxes, power supplies, whatever you want to call them. Uh, with this end on them before. Um, it's really kind of an odd end. So basically to do this, I'm just going to cut one end off of one and put it on the other. I'll admit, not the prettiest job I've ever done at this, but it's pretty strong and that's what we need. So. If we now take this bad boy again and we try and run it off of 3 volts, let's see what happens. Remember before this was running off of 12 volts, now we're trying to run it off of 3 volts. And what you might expect, it is on. It's just really, really dim. Like super, super dim. But that's good, because that's exactly what we are looking for, is uh, just enough juice to power our LEDs. I suppose the next thing to do is start desoldering these bulbs and uh, putting in LEDs. Both blue and green are now soldered in. I'm probably going to move to white before I move to red and yellow, because I worry that the uh, red and yellow might burn up. So. I want to put a resistor on, or at least make sure they're not going to before I start soldering those in at least. So this is the actual brightness of the LEDs, what they should be functioning at. The issue is, is that I can't actually technically just, um, just uh, hook up the red LEDs right in here because they have a lower, red and yellow, have a lower forward voltage than the um, green, blue, or white one, which means they would be sucking up all the... Uh, all the amperage and to demonstrate that if I were to take one of the red or yellows you'll see as soon as I touch it the right way around oop, those lights will turn off because this LED is just basically effect acting as a short circuit and uh, shorten out the, uh, the rest of the lights which is no good. So I actually have to attach these each with their own resistor, otherwise they are not going to play nicely. I'm going to solder in a resistor right here, and then solder the light onto that resistor like that. Because like I said right now, if I were to put the light on here, you can see it just acts as basically short for that side and dims the lights. But if I connect it through the resistor, like so, 
can see the light lights without dimming the other lights, which means it's not sucking all the excess current from those lights, which is good because if it was sucking all the excess current, this light would probably go pretty quickly. So basically what you can see here is I've soldered in one side and then just kind of have the lead of the LED and the resistor end meeting right there. And I'm just going to solder right in between the two of them there. And then now you can take these junk snips I have gotten from a garage sale and snip those two apart. Might actually touch up the solder a little bit in that area, but hopefully now if I turn on the power, yes, the red LED lights. Well, there we go through <clears throat> skill, luck, and possibly divine intervention, all the lights are in and they are all working. Now, I got a few minor cosmetic things I need to do before I can actually finish this off, in which case I need to repaint the inside to make it look, well, black again, like it's supposed to. I nicked it up quite a bit while installing this stuff. And I'm going to take that other uh, blue light strip, which I have right here. I'm gonna cut off the end this battery pack, which I just messed up the switch because there's supposed to be a cover on it, um, and hook that directly up to these two leads, possibly with a resistor to lower the brightness. And of course, the battery pack can be saved and used for other projects because these things are like a dollar if you buy them online, so it's kind of ridiculous. And I got this whole 10 LEDs plus the battery, or not the batteries, but the, the box and the switch for a dollar. So. Okay, they have been wired in to uh, in series along with these lights here with a 330 ohm resistor on them. Um, basically, if I had no resistor, it would cause these lights to completely kick out altogether. And if I um, had a lesser resistor, it'd still get quite a drop. Plus, this is about a good brightness for the outside of this. You don't want it to be blinding you while it's on. It's looking pretty good. I think that's about a right intensity for those lights. I think it's time to see how this now looks. So if I just drop that disc, this is actually what it looks like in normal light now. It's kind of hard to see unless you look at it on an angle, but look at that, that is really nice. Once again, this is only really, really narrow, but look at that, those blades. So yeah, we don't get as much of a rainbowy color because we have more pure colors versus those incandescent colors. Let me turn off the light here though. Oh yeah, that's what we're talking about. Now the cover still hasn't been put on yet, so it's not quite finished, but that is creating a nice, nice effect. Now there's one thing that bothers me. I put that window tint on, and because this was already tinted, it like super tinted the glass. I'm starting to wonder if it might be a little bit too tinted. So just to be sure that I'm not actually messing with the effect by having too much tint, which would work fine if we had brighter LEDs, but uh, make sure I don't have too much tint. I'm going to peel off that tinted layer and take another look at it without the extra tinting on and see how it looks then. So yeah, basically just as I theorized, with it taken off here, you see a lot more going on. There's a lot more clutter, but it doesn't quite look as deep. However, if you put the window tint on, like right over the top here, it looks deeper, but you don't see anywhere near the amount of light coming through. Which once again, the whole concept of this is light bouncing back and forward between the, um, between the back reflective plate and the glass, and basically that light being trapped in there and moving back and forward creates this illusion of this depth. I think I might actually keep it like this though, just because it is like so many different colors going on and there, it looks really neat. Well, okay, it is actually completely done now. Um, I basically feel that it went from something that I'd be embarrassed to have in my house into something that's actually pretty cool and I'd like to show other people. Let's take a look at it. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Now I do know there's a little tiny nick right in the center there that was from where some hot solder fell onto and it damaged the foil there. I'll probably at some point grab uh, some silver acrylic paint and fix that, just that little tiny area, which it won't have the same effect in that area, but at least it'd be a lot less noticeable than that white 
but the effect is a lot better than it was before. I think removing the extra uh, tinting was a good idea because like I said, even though if it makes a little extra depth, it just wasn't as colorful. It's kind of hard to see because of this light, so let me turn off this light too. Oh yes, look at that. That is really actually pretty cool. And like I said before, I would have been almost embarrassed to have it in my house. Now, I look at it and it's just like, wow, I really like that actually. Very cool effect. Let me get a shot with the camera from different angles. And it even comes with its own handy dandy little stand right here so I can set it up like so and show you guys from a different view. expected the uh, transformer no longer gets hot at all too which is a very very good thing so I don't have to worry about this being a fire hazard anymore I hope you guys liked this early release video if you are my patreon and thank you as your funding helped purchase the resistors and LEDs in the video which will be used for various projects on my channel and if you are not my patreon I hope you still found this video entertaining and I thank you for watching and hope you'll drop me a like and if you want early access to videos like this, you can use the link below to become my Patreon and help support not only these vids, but the main vids I also put out on my channel. I promise the other vids in the future should be a lot shorter, as this project actually took around 9 hours to do, and took about 2 days to edit as I had 3 hours of raw footage to cut down. Then the render time after that was about another 2 days. But anyways, that all aside, thank you guys for watching once again, and bye!